can take our seats. And what a lovely time that I get to spend with you. I was once a youth, and I think sometimes I, I will trust God to remain a youth for the better part of my life. I don't know whether because I got married made me now no longer a youth, but I think youth is much more a mindset than anything else. And so I think by the time I will be 80, I want to maintain my youthhood. Hallelujah. But yeah, this morning I have looked at what is happening around the world and uh, considered uh, the seasons we are living in. And I have a subject that I want to speak to, I want to share with us on. And my title is Surviving the Dangerous Times. Surviving the Dangerous Times. I have a number of young people that are my good friends and we spend good amount of time and so I get to hear from them some of their fears and some of their conscience when we talk about this country. So the other day I was asking somebody, uh, what makes you proud to be a Kenyan? Actually the answer was very sad. They said nothing. And then I said to them, what makes you sad being a Kenyan? They say life is very stressful. And now that is a youth. And that thing spoke volumes for me because if as, as a youth, what the country has given us, you can tell me that it is stressful. I think that shows a lot in terms of what we have done. But I listened to her and I said, okay. She's not just the only person. There are many. And may God help the young men of this nation to rise above what we that went ahead of you might have done to it. Uh, but I want to say that every generation has got their own challenges that they have to tackle. But apparently within those seasons, God knows and God continues to work and raise individuals that will stand above the levels and challenges of those days. And so my prayer is, if you are a young person, you are a youth, you have, you're looking to the future that God will invest in you the capacity and the ability to rise above what you're experiencing in this life. And so my text today is the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy from chapter 3. We will have a lengthy reading and the Lord will help me. Will help us get through it. And as we read... I'm sure we all have been accustomed to who Timothy was. He was a young man, young like you. And he, was, he loved God and he was serving in the church in Lystra. You can find his story back in the book of Acts. And Paul finds him and then the elders of the church commits him to Paul. Paul begins to walk together with him. And he shows himself to be such a man of, such a man of great qualities that Paul would now later entrust leadership to him as a young man. By reading his letters, I am, it almost looks like he, was, he became an oversight over a number of churches. We know for certain that Paul tells him when he begins to write the second letter that remember the reason why I left you in the church, at the church of Ephesians, that to set over leadership. So we know that he was actually functioning much more on oversight role among some of the churches that Paul planted. And that, the thing that gets me is that he was a young man. But being a young man, we also know that he, has, he had his own challenges and fears. And Paul would write to him and say to him, fear not. He would write to him and say to him, let not anybody despise you because you are young. And I am sure every one of us comes through a stage in life whereby you feel that you don't qualify. And even in our age, it goes with age, you can, you'll find yourself in a setting that you really feel like, man, I cannot do this. But then the word of the Lord comes and says, fear not. Don't let anyone despise you because it is not what they see, but it is what is in you. And so 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Bible says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of them, their own selves, of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, and thankful and holy, without natural affection, 
truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Bible goes on to say that for this, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, now as gents and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the, the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no farther, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men, as theirs also, as theirs also was. Verse 10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, the, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learnt, and has been assured of has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learnt them. That from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The 16 goes to say that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Every person, every person alive wants five things majorly in their lives, mostly, in most times. People want mental stability. At least they want to wake up on the good side of the bed and not with, not walking with the right shoe on the left shoe and the shirt going the other way. They want mental stability. They also want a spiritual stability. Many people alive I believe in a spiritual in a spirituality. There's few that say they are atheists. But atheists have also been spiritual people. That is why they came to the conclusion that there is no God. They also want emotional stability. And then another thing that they want is financial stability. Men, I tell you, every person, mostly that I talk to, they say they want money. Financial stability. Financial freedom. They want social stability. And as people that are living among people, man was, man was built to live among a community. We are living in these times whereby people are prepared to do anything. To get one of these, even if they crush one another down, unfortunately. But the Bible is not strange. The Bible says, in the last days, difficult times will come. And men shall be lovers of themselves. When I look at our country, for example, what is happening? What propels corruption? It is nothing but a love of self. Greed driven by recklessness. When I feel that what I want, I must get, regardless at whose expense. When I lose a heart to know that there are other people that are dependent upon me. And that is unfortunately what the world we are living in today. You've got people taking advantage of you because of being a youth. But these are the things that they want. That every person wants. And even us sitting here this morning, I know you want stability you want financial freedom and independence you want the social stability in your life you want to know that you've got friends that you can count on many people live miserable lives because they feel rejected and i've been following to see what is happening on the 
social network sometimes. And I tell you, social network is driven by a desire to be accepted. And I love to know that there's somebody that values who I am. And that is why people are vying for followers. People are vying for content. What will I create that will make me be acceptable? They want to be socially accepted. But the issue is, the Bible says that, yeah, they will be lovers of themselves. They will be covetous, they will be boasters, they will be proud, they will be blasphemous, they will be disobedient to parents and thankful. And as a young man living in these days, how are you going to chart your way in the midst of everything that is going through? We've got the desire, the five things that most people want, and then we've got the reality of what is happening here. Some people have been betrayed. And among many majority, sin has been redefined. For the youth, sin is no longer not honoring God, but rather as long as I don't disintegrate. If I, don't, if I disintegrate, that will be sin. So we are prepared to put up a face, although we are broken on the inside. Because as long as they cannot see the real me that is happening on the inside, I'm still good. Sin will be to reveal who I am. And that is one of the things that has actually propelled suicides in this day among the youth. Why? Because somebody wrote a statement. The other day it happened in South Africa. The girl that was bullied for who she was. And at the end of the day, taking her life. At what cost? As a young man in the house of God, I want to challenge us that yes, God knew we will be living in these times with these things that have been defined. But the issue is we've got to choose differently. So you living in this time, you need to know, if I'm going to make it, then my choices, number one, must be God-centered. Whatever you do, always ask yourself, where is the place of God in this? Some people will tell you, just do this, don't worry. Just look the other side. It is not a season to look the other side in this day that we are living in. Because everybody wants to look the other side. But God is counting on you that you will stare the thing in the face and set a standard. So as a young man, your calling is to set a standard. Every one of you, you must rise to a position of leadership. Paul writes and tells Timothy, in the time, a time is coming. You are going to experience this. But he says to him, But you, but you have fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. He says, but you. Everything else that is happening here will be very bad. But there is something different about you. It is time as a young person to draw from the substance that has been continuously deposited within your life. Whether you, whatever you do, whether in business, the thing that needs to guide you is the principles that have made you who you are. The other day, I had a discussion with a team of people that love God. And then they were telling me a story whereby a church, uh, some, young, some young people went, fell into sin, let me say, and it was a sexual sin. And let me say, in this day, immorality has become a lot more prevalent. And especially now that nowadays everybody's at their own corner, I tell you, yo, may God help us. May God help us. So these two, these two people, they fell into sin, and obviously pregnancy ensued. So then the church decided to actually present them to the congregation. And I tell you, the group that I was with, they were so mad. How could the pastor do that? I mean, who does that? I said to them, so what did you want them to do? I said, no, it is not right. Right because who says? The last days. Truth, these days, my number two, the other thing that I want you to pick is that truth has become relative. So I choose my truth and you choose your truth. We don't have a standard truth. So I said to her, by the way, 
actually what they did is very biblical. Like, no. I'm like, yeah, open the book of Corinthians. It's there. Paul says, such one. I mean, purge him out. What does it mean to purge out? <laughs> so, so I said to her, every church must have a standard discipline procedure. They must know how to deal with those things and their members must be prepared and informed and made aware in terms of this is how we operate. So I said to them, I feel sorry for them, but ideally it was a good thing that was done. I said, how? They said, now, will they continue to go to church? I said, now they've got their choice. But ideally, when you fall into sin, and there are certain consequences. And I said, you know, people make a big thing, especially now for the young people. People make a big thing about how they get treated if somebody ever falls into a sexual sin. And they say that, but everybody sins. Fair, square, and right. But the Bible says whoever commits sexual sin sins against his own body. And that is what happens in these days. These other sins don't leave you with the nonsenses of soul ties. And most people's lives are destroyed and damaged because of where they have been. So anyway, in these days, people love themselves. But I want to challenge you to love God and set God as the standard of your operation. And Paul writes to Timothy, so he says, yeah, people will be without natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good. We are living in a generation that call good evil. And then we call evil good because that is what everybody wants. But above all, they say there will be truth breakers. I'm sure you have been betrayed. Most people cry because a friend betrayed them. I told somebody something in confidence the next time I hear it on the street along the grapevine. And so people walk naked because it is very difficult to find a, play, a person that will cover for you. You tell them, this is what I'm going through. They say, "Let okay, we'll pray for you. And the way they pray for you, they will swing it through the grapevine. They go to your pastor and they say, Pastor, let me tell you. You know, sister, Pauline told me this. Let's pray for her. And then they go to the next person. You know, sister so-and-so told me this. Let's pray for her. And at the end of the day, it becomes a gossip talk. I want to challenge you as a young person. Please, shun away gossip. Keep it far from you. Because it will damage you. Don't be a truth breaker. Be somebody that somebody can confide in. And know that this is a friend. That this is somebody that I can consult when I have issues in my life. And I will not be scared. That this is somebody that will not judge me for who I am. We are called to live in an open relationship. But unfortunately today, there are so many plastics. Because I am too scared that if I reveal who I am, you will run away from me. And so uh, when I come, nobody wants to talk to me because they can see right through my nakedness. Don't be a person that breaks other people down as a young person. And so Paul says, the season will come when people have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God. And there is, that is no far from the truth from where we are today. We say we love God, but we don't want to know the transforming power of God in our lives. And I pray that we will allow the Holy Spirit to do a deep work in us as a people. Because your destiny and the future of this nation is in your hands. Imagine, I'm talking to the youth now. I will pass away in a normal world. Ideally, I should die before you. Except that things happen the other way. But what the position and the role that I am playing, that role will be taken over by somebody like you. And so your season of preparation is now. As a youth, you need to work on essentials of developing yourself. The number one thing that you must be developing is your character. You need to be a person of character. Because if you are a person of character, then what Paul defines here to be happening in the last days, that will not be part of your life. A person of character. People see you for who you are. 
And people know that this I cannot do in the presence of so and so. In, I mean, you become such a person that when you walk into a place, they know there is somebody that has come into the room. Because there is something different about you. You need to work on your character. And for your character, you need the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You need them. You need to be a person that is kind. You need to be a person that has got some joy. You need to be a person that has got some love. You need to be a person that has got some patience in your life. You know the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can read them from the book of Galatians. That forms your character. You need that one. And the beautiful thing about it is, whatever we have, we can continuously work on to them, work on to it. That is why the Bible says, if you have these things, then you can continue to progressively work towards them, towards the other things. So you need to look at, as a person, how is your life? Where are you and what do you need? What improvement areas do you need? You need to work on your competence as a young person. Some are in college, others are working. Your ability to function efficiently will only depend on your competency. There's people that they say, I can do this, and you give them a job. Then at the end of the day, you realize, why did I even try? Develop your competency. Reminds me of some of our graduates. Men, I tell you. They've got the paper, but you give them the job. <laughs> then they ask what? What did you study? So I had to ask them, what year did they train you? <laughs> because it doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm like, what, what syllabus did they use to train you? Because what I expect in terms of delivery, which is very basic, I don't see competency. You work on it. The other thing that you need to work on is you need to work on your connection. You need to work on connections. And that is what we're trying to do in the social network. I'm sure everybody wants to see how many friends we have. How many followers do we have? Connections. But you better have the right connections. No, one, no man can live by themselves as an island. So work on your connections. But then choose rightly. Because we know that uh, bad morals spoil good character. It's no secret about that. So who are you connected with? And what do you get with them? I tell people that I've mentored, I say to them, this is how I reason and pick my friends. I ask myself the question, what value do they add to my journey, my life's destiny? And what do they take away from me? So I define in terms of, okay, is there a mutual exchange? Is there, uh, do they cause me to want to do better or what? What do they take away from me? And what do they add into my life? Then I decide this is a person worth spending time with. The other thing that we need to work on is we need to have some care in our lives. We need to care for one another as young people. Then again, we need to have a positive contribution. We need to contribute something to this life. And when we spend our times developing those things, I believe that our contribution must be beyond who we are. It is sad to have a person that all that they ever want to be is, they ever think about is their lives. They become miserable. Let me say, your life alone cannot be the measure of your worth in this life. You've got to find a vision bigger than yourself to live for. If you don't have that, you will be disappointed. And so you need to find something that you can contribute towards. And this thing that you contribute towards, it needs to be something of a greater significance, far more than just your life. And you see, when a young person develops and works on himself to the point that they are so focused on making a contribution that is beyond themselves, then they can make the right choices because they're guided by that. That becomes their driving purpose in life. I can give you an example. Somebody like in the Bible, somebody like um, Timothy, whom, you, whom we're talking about. And we, his life's purpose became doing that which God called him for. And so he had to stay focused on it all. 
I can give you the example of the disciples and the apostles. That Christ had called them and said, I will make you fishers of men. Their vision for life was just to fish like there has been, they have, that, has, that had been happening in their family. But they suddenly received a vision that was greater and beyond their family and their personal lives. And for that, they staked their lives. And they were prepared to even die for it. And so the question that I have this morning in your life, to, to you as a young person is, what is your vision? What do you want to contribute on this earth? We are God's gift to the world. What we do is our gift back to God and to the world and, for, and the future generations. And now they tell us this world has redefined so many things. It says a man's value. What is your worth? So they tell me that my worth is determined by my bank account. And so we want money. Hallelujah. Every one person wants money. They don't want to be told insufficient balance. <laughs> they want to be told, they want to see a fat balance. Is that it? Only that. <laughs> so they say, I want money. As I told somebody the other day, money answers things. The Bible says money answers all things. So money by itself can never be the end. Money is a means to an end. Money comes to serve something that you're working on. If you make money itself become an end, then money turns into a God in your life. And that is why we've got some of the wealthiest people and the most stingy. Because money has become a God in their life and they worship it. And so whatever thing, they can never part away with it. I want to challenge you as a young person. Be generous. Be generous. Live generously. And let money serve you. There's only two things that happen with money. Money will serve you or you will serve money. If you serve money, you will be miserable in your life. Because you'll never have enough. And even if you have enough, like some people I know in this country, that I will never mention, they will still continue to corrupt themselves to continue to accumulate more and more. Why? Because the value of life for you has been reduced to a piece of paper with zeros on it. And so as a young person, your vision needs to rise above just money. As you walk in obedience and pursue a purpose than money, you will be surprised what God does in your life. I was telling somebody, that when I calculate what I've done, the value of what I have done in this life, I think I'm more wealthy than some of the people with the greatest amount of money in their bank accounts. But I did not do that because I had much. I did that because I abandoned myself into the hands of the Almighty God. And when you give yourself to God, God knows what, you wa what he wants with your life and where he will take you. So in these days, when they say, the days are evil. Yes, they are evil. But to survive in these times, we need to write a different narrative. You've got time to work on the things that will make you excel in your life. And so I finish by saying the things that characterize youths, which are actually false, is friends. Some friends are fickle. You need real and true friends. You don't need truth breakers. The other thing is attitude. Your attitude will rule your life, one of my lecturers says. And there's some people that are always walk with a very sour and sad attitude. You've got to be different. The other thing is looks. Looks are deceiving. And especially today. Oh, man. The other day, I had this guy sing. You will forgive me. Especially the ladies. I think it's Mboso. Is it? Atashe pusikizi wananunua. But life has become so plastic. That we can get anything plastic. We are, no, we are no longer real. But I don't want to be stoned by the ladies. <laughs> so I will not delve much on that. <laughs> but I am calling you to be real. Looks are deceiving. Today we live behind the filter, I tell you. I get a person, man, they are so smooth behind, on the camera. 
But when you meet them, you think like, I made a mistake, oh Lord. Is this the same person? The two don't mix. Life behind the filter today. Man, we got to be real with ourselves. You can only deceive the world, but you can't deceive yourself. Because at the end of the day, you go and shower, you look in the mirror and realize, this is me. And you even wonder, you're going to face the day tomorrow. The other thing is the skills. Skills cannot become the thing that define you. Skill are the thing you use to make a contribution. And then the thing, the other thing is your experience. Work to earn it. Experience. Your experience. So those five things cannot decide and say, this is me. Your friends cannot decide who you really are. You need to know that those things, they are false. Just as the word false. Friends, attitude, looks, skills, experience. Your real identity lies in finding your purpose in God. And so as a young person, in this day and age, I want to challenge you. Find your purpose in God and live. let God do what, he only, what only he can do in your life. And even if it means dying for it. You see, the beautiful thing about purpose is when you get it, and then you do it. You may not have to do it for 20 years. Maybe we might do it just for three years. But the impact will be eternal. Jesus served for only three years. But his impact, still today, we talk about what he did. Stephen served just for a season. Unfortunately, he was stoned for his convictions. But in his death, he says, I see heavens open and the Son of Man standing up and so we come to a place that we say I want to live for God nothing less than God alone in my life my choices must be influenced by my passion and love for God why because he is the only one that has never changed he has never changed the Bible even in our country now we're busy with the constitutional referendum we have changed it every other time but God has not changed his word it is eternal because he said it is settled in heaven. You where you are, you have changed your friends so many because every area you will go, you will find new friends. But the word of God remains. I want to ask you to stand. And as you stand, I want you to think about your life. And considering that these days we are living, the question number one to ask is, how is your life? How is your life? And then the second thing that you need to ask is, what adjustments do you need to make in your life to be that person that God can be proud about? See, the other thing again that, is, that defines our lives is the fear of failure. We don't want to fail God, some of us. We don't want to fail our parents, some of us. We don't want to fail those that depend on us. And so we're pushing on hard. But God did not set you up for failure. And so the question is, what improvements do you need to make? So that we can actually have fun and have fun in the kingdom. So just bow your head and just whisper to your God. Are you a person that, can, that others can depend upon? That you can be a confident? And what is the purpose of your life? Are you living for yourself? Or are you living for something bigger? God wants to make himself known through you. Are you prepared to become the letter that other people will read and say, surely, I want to know this God? So let's lift our hands and pray before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning I thank you because, Lord, yes, we are living in dangerous times. But in order to survive it, Lord, we need to work on our skill sets. We need to work on our competencies. We need to work 
We need to allow you, Father God, to finish up what you're doing in our lives so that we can become people of character. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you will give this young man the ability to stand and make different choices in this generation. A generation that has been defined as corrupt, flimsy and fickle, Lord, that they would set out a different narrative, Lord. That those that watch over their lives will know there is a God that lives in heaven. And that there is a God who has a purpose with their lives. And that they will not break. But rather God, that they will be stronger by the day. That even if they were to face rejection, they will realize that to be alone with God is actually to be at home with the majority. Father God, that they will not feel, they will not be caused, they will not be broken down by other people that may look down upon them because they've chosen differently. I pray, Father, that you'll give them that strength that by your Holy Spirit that they will stand out as people that love you and serve you. And if you're a young man, maybe you've lived your life You've gone on the other side of life. This morning I want to come to you and tell you that Jesus still loves you. He still has a plan. He is not, he's saying, I died for you. I can make you perfect. And maybe you even have compromised in your journey and fell into sin and a whole lot of other stuff. And you don't even know if there is hope today. The friends that you hoped upon have now rejected you. I want to tell you this morning there is one that sticks closer than a brother. This morning he's saying to you, come home, my dear child. And so repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am, I am a sinner in need of your redemption. Please forgive me for the sin that I've committed against you. And bring me home to yourself. Write my name in the book of life. And save me from my sin. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. If you made that prayer, you can contact us or you can find a, a church that is Bible-believing. And the Lord bless you. Thank you.